All right, guys. Here's how you flush your radiator in your car, truck, or van. First thing you're gonna wanna do is go down to Walmart and get your supplies. You need some radiator flush cleaner, some new antifreeze, some distilled water, and if you already have all this stuff on hand, you don't have to use a cleaner. You can also use distilled white vinegar. Now, some people buy the already mixed antifreeze, and that's fine. But if you buy the stuff and mix it yourself, you get a lot more for your money. So what we're going to do is fill our radiator with the flush cleaner and some tap water, and we're gonna run it through a couple cycles until it comes out clean. And we're gonna clean out our reservoir and everything and make sure everything's nice and clean. And then we're gonna fill it up with some new antifreeze. Now when we run our water through the radiator, we're gonna do this about three times until it comes out clean. And it's important to wait in between each time and let the motor cool down fully because you don't want all that pressure and hot antifreeze and water spewing out everywhere all over you. So make sure you let it cool down enough between each cycle. First thing you're going to want to do is take your radiator cap off and you can see our radiator is absolutely filthy. You can see all the rust and gunk in there whatever it is and you can see that our reservoir is equally as dirty i mean it's just filthy so the first thing you're going to want to do is drain all the antifreeze out of your radiator now sometimes you have to pop the hoses off of the bottom of the radiator to drain it but on this truck it has a little pet cock on the bottom of the radiator now you can see where that pet cock is. I've just put a short piece of hose on there and put it into an old bucket. And what you're going to want to do is turn the pet cock right here to drain out the radiator. Now if your car or truck doesn't have a pet cock on the bottom of it, you can see the lower radiator hose right there. You can get to it from below with a pair of channel locks and get that hose clamp off of it. Just slide it back up onto the hose and drain your radiator into a bucket. Now to drain your reservoir, you're probably gonna have a hose up here. You can pull this off and put it into a bucket lower than the reservoir in order for it to drain. You can see on this truck, somebody thought it was a good idea to put some of that radiator leak stop stuff in it. And now it's all at the bottom of this reservoir. So we're going to have to get all that gunk out of there. I'm going to try to flush it out with a hose. It should wash out. You never want to use that stuff. Just If your radiator's leaking, just replace the radiator. I mean, they're not that expensive and it's worth doing. Instead of dumping a bottle of that crap in here, because this is what it does, it just gunks up everything. And the top of the hose that comes out of here, I've taken it off, but it was gunked up with that crap too. So now I either got to buy a new hose or clean it out, because it's really, really clogged up in there. So we got to flush this out. And when you're flushing your radiator, you want to make sure that the reservoir is just as clean as the radiator. Now get your garden hose and get in here and flush all that crap out. Make sure it drains into a catch bucket so you don't pollute. Okay, now the first flush you're going to want to do is put your bucket up under the radiator. Then we're going to get our garden hose. And then we're going to flush all the crap that's in the radiator out through the bottom. Now you want to make sure you catch this stuff because you don't want to drain it down the storm drain or into the ground because it's really poisonous. It's a good idea to wear rubber gloves too.
I'll do this for a couple minutes and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now you want to reconnect any hoses that you may have taken off and tighten up the petcock if your radiator's got one on the bottom of it so we can fill this thing with some water to flush it. Okay, now we're going to fill our radiator with this cleaner and we're going to dump the whole bottle in here and then fill the rest with water. Now you can also use white vinegar if you don't have any cleaner, but this probably works better because it's made for it. Okay, now we're going to add water to the radiator until it's full, but not coming out the overflow. Okay, so it's full now. Okay, now what you want to do is put your cap back on and start your motor and let it idle and get up the temperature and then you're going to turn your heat on full blast and let it run for like 10-15 minutes. Now I'm going to let this stuff sit in here overnight because this radiator is so gunked up but you don't have to do that. It's not necessary. Alright now turn your heat on high turn it on max and put on full blast. Now crank her up and get her up to temperature and let it run for like 10 minutes after it's up to temperature and then shut it off. Okay, now you want to drain the radiator of your cleaner mix. I'm going to use a petcock, but if you don't have a petcock, you can disconnect the bottom hose. Now just let all that coolant drain out. Now you might have to disconnect your bottom hose if you don't want to wait for the little petcock to drain. This way it'll rush out really quick so you can do it faster. Here's what our coolant looks like after the first flush. It's supposed to be green, but you can see it's definitely not green. All right, now fill your radiator back up for the second time. All right, now crank her back up for the second time with your heat on max and get it up to temperature and let it run once it's up to temperature for like 10 or 15 minutes, same as the first time. Now we're going to let it cool down for a little while and then we're going to drain that water. Okay, now we need to drain our radiator for the second time. Now you can see it's getting cleaner. This might take more than three times. It all just depends on how clean your cooling system is and how well maintained it was. 
Now you might have to take some of your hoses off and back flush it with some water. It all just depends on how dirty everything is. All right, now we're gonna fill up our radiator for the third time. All right, now crank her back up for the third time with the heat still on high. Now we need to drain our radiator for the last time. Here's our water after our final flush. You're never gonna be able to get it perfectly clean. It all depends on the vehicle's age and how it was maintained. If it's a really, really old vehicle, this might be the best that you can do. If it's a newer vehicle, you might be able to get it much, much cleaner than this. It all just depends. But keep flushing it until you're confident. That's the best you're gonna get. You can see how clean we got the reservoir. There's still a little bit of stuff at the bottom, but I mean, that's fine. You can scrape it out if you want to, but it's nice and clean. There's no more sludge at the bottom of it. All right, now we're ready to fill this thing with some new coolant. Now everybody's got their own special technique for mixing antifreeze, but what I like to do is fill an empty water jug halfway with antifreeze and then halfway with distilled water and just keep dumping that into the radiator and the reservoir until everything's full. That way I know it's mixed exactly right. Now you have to use distilled water. Don't just use tap water when you do this because tap water has a lot of minerals in it and that'll build up in your radiator and gunk it up. You absolutely have to use distilled water. Now you can see I have some mixed up right here, 50-50. We'll go on ahead and dump that into the radiator. All right, now it's time to add our antifreeze water mix. Make sure you put all your hoses back on and your pet cocks are closed and everything. All right, it took a whole gallon. All right, now you wanna keep filling it until it gets to this very top bottom lip of your radiator. And then you're gonna crank the motor over with the cap off and top it off some more. You wanna run it for a while to purge all the air out of the system and to fill all your lines. And then you're gonna put the cap back on and let it get up the temperature and then you're gonna let it cool down and top it off all the way. All right, now that your motor's cooled down, make sure your radiator's fully topped off. And make sure your reservoir is topped off to its maximum mark. Now the whole reason you wanna let it cool down and get up to temperature and cool down and get up to temperature and cool down and get up to temperature is because you have to get the motor hot enough for the thermostat to open in order to get the antifreeze or the water or whatever you're running through it back through the motor or else it won't get all the way through the motor if the thermostat is closed because it's not up to temperature. So once your radiator is nice and full and your reservoir is nice and full 
you're done. Go out and take it for a test drive and maybe top it off a couple hours later. Just make sure it's all nice and full. So that's how you flush your radiator. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe if this helped y'all out. Later.